well with you from whatever part of the world you're watching us. Of course, this is an ambush. Literally, it's not Sunday. Don't get worried. Your phones and your calendars are quite working properly. But of course, it is a special edition with a focus on the forthcoming Rwanda presidential elections. My name, as always, is Eugene. And tonight on the program, we're putting a focus on the preparations. And of course, we're just nearly, barely two days to go before Rwandans go to the votes. We will definitely be analyzing some of the current affairs issues. Plus, of course, the emerging issues in this vote right here. But first of all, if you're just joining us, it's important to also understand that the presidential candidates have also been hitting the ground running to campaign and trying to find, you know, the uh, taste and the liking from the different electorate to convince the over 6.8 million voters who are up for grab. Presidential candidates for the Rwanda Patriotic Front has been receiving an arousing welcome everywhere he's been going for the campaign. Trail. And of course, also the Democratic Green Party has also been trying to seek uh, the nod from uh, the different uh, uh, Rwandans who will be voting in this election. Also, not forgetting the independent candidate, Felipe Maimana. He has been putting up a spirited effort in trying to woo voters. And of course, he was here on this particular program and he said that he is optimistic that he will definitely win this vote. We'll be analyzing that right here on this particular program. But just to get you to know the candidates that we already have looking at the super screen right here we have president paul kagame the incumbent who is representing the rwanda patriotic front of course we have dr frank avineza from the democratic green party we also have the only independent candidate who is felipe maimana let's just quickly take a look at uh, the profiles of these particular candidates we have uh, president paul kagame uh, this is what we know about the current president of rwanda and the chairman of uh, the ruling rpf this is the information. He was born in 1957. He was the vice president and also the minister of uh, defense in between 1994 and 2000. Of course, in 1998, he was elected the, the president of the RPF in Otani. And of course, from 2000, he was elected as Rwanda's uh, president. Of course, these are some of the little information that we have from uh, the uh, presidential aspirants. This is the Democratic Green Party's uh, presidential candidate, Dr. Frank Havineza, was born in Gashianare in 1977. And of course, he uh, took this particular role that you can see uh, right here. And of course, uh, he has been the uh, president of the Democratic Green Party from the year 2009. There you go, the independent presidential candidate, Felipe Maimana. There you go. He is the information that we have about this gentleman, former journalist, of course. And uh, he was born in 1970. And uh, he has definitely been doing all these particular uh, roles right there. But we'll be getting deeper into some of the conversations about this particular candidates right here on this particular program. Let me introduce my panelists in just a bit. Stay with us. Definitely an interactive program. Use the hashtag Rwanda Election 2017. We'll be able to sample some of your tweets in the course of the program. Saidi, thank you so much. You say you've already tuned in. Uh, Janine Munyanshuri, thank you so much. You're 
getting reading, I can see. Of course, we have the panelists right on the program, none other than a good friend of ours, who is uh, Christine Amira. Thank you so much for joining us on yeah, the program. Thank you, too. You are Kenyan, living in Rwanda, yes. and working in Rwanda. Yes. It will be interesting to get your perspective with Kenya, just going for elections in less than six days. Yes. Lons and Nigeria is not a stranger on this particular program. Thank you so much. Our dictionaries are actually on standby. My <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Of course, we also have Frank. Uh, thank you so much from Youth Impact Mission. Thank you for being on the program. And of course, uh, our good friend, uh, Ibiditi. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us uh, on the Thank program. Thank you for having me again. Mm. Of course, um, you know, we have the election going mm. on mm. on 3rd of August. Mm. And of course, this is for the Rwandans who will be living, who are living in the diaspora. Yeah. And uh, today, you know, it's just barely one day to go for them. Uh, and, and, and for the rest of us who are living here, who will be voting here, it's mm -hmm. almost two days if you can count it in that sense. The mood on the ground, mm -hmm. more so of a celebratory one. Mm -hmm. This is what people have been <laughs> saying when they read the mood on the ground as well as elections, you know, nears. If you compare this with what we see in other democracies, in other countries, mm -hmm. during electioneering processes, it's usually more of a contest of, mm -hmm. you know, the battle of supremacy. I am the one who's able to beat you and I'll be able to beat you in this sense. Mm -hmm. Christine, let me start with you mm -hmm. because you're the one nearest here and of course, mm -hmm. being a lady as well, they always yes. say ladies, ladies first. first. <laughs> your yeah. comment or mm -hmm. your reaction mm -hmm. to the mood on the ground with mm -hmm. barely two days to go mm -hmm. for the elections, what's your take? Um, I, I don't know where to start mm -hmm. in regards to the, the climate and rather the atmosphere around here in terms of uh, this period. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been one month since uh, it's called NEC, mm -hmm. uh, launched the whole uh, presidential campaign and everything. And it has been a peaceful, it has been a, I don't know, as you said, celebratory mood. And my of course, it is. It is Especially for people involved in the business, if they are, they are comfortable. However, uh, the vote because usually uh, the turn up is very high, so that means they, they, they have reason why to go to the polls. If, if they didn't have the reason, turnout would be low. Usually it is very high and uh, it's in a celebratory mode. But the fact that it is so calm, I mean, in, unless the, you go to areas where there is a, a campaign taking place, in other places you wouldn't even notice that an election is underway. Right. Yeah. Mm. Tell me a bit about what this says or how or what this means for Rwanda's democracy. Let me start with you, Lonzen. Because, you know, there are those who sort of say that the, the whole, uh, you know, tailor-made sort of democracy where there is consensus, consensus building, uh, you know, uh, we move in this direction. In one way or another, some people have, or critics of this have said that um, this locks out the cut sort of competition, you know, we seem to all agree, let's go that direction. What are the pros and cons then of this process that you say is clearly designed to be this way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, um the the pros actually it is a very significant pro and it is such that um it it circumvents the african uh, uh, the tendency in african uh, societies of holding uh, electoral politics on ethnic basis and it forces the candidates to design programs to sell to the electorate now because that is a new thing uh, this is actually ethnic undertones, and this is to the credit of the participants, uh, the candidates, that they have not really gone into this unnecessary sewage. So, um, they are forced by law and by um, integrity to circumvent the, this ethnic uh, aspect of mm -hmm. electoral politics in Africa. And um, by doing so, it appears that the election is... Um, is uh, boring, in yeah, it's, it's boring, and but but it is a shift from the counterproductive excitement of ethnic-based tension and and, and uh, even murders in some places into a much more difficult um, 
technical aspect of electoral politics that requires significant amount of technical capacity of uh, opposition research, it requires a, a very high level sophistication to which they must shift now. Uh, and I think it's good for the African uh, uh, citizen because that means better outcomes. That means democracy is becoming more substantive. It is getting away from the democracy of, of, of the gallery, of excitement, of wanting to appease somebody. Uh, These from, are the from pros. Yeah, yeah. What about the, the cons? Uh, of course. Um, the cons, um, it's, it's very difficult for me to talk about the cons because uh, someone can look at the, the, the weaknesses in these technical capacities as being hindrances. But for me, I would rather they live up to the challenge than for me to lower the bar for them to, to, to be able to cross it, to jump over it. Yeah? So I prefer that the parties learn how to operate in a terrain that may be much more difficult, but that produces a democracy that is useful for the African. Mm -hmm. Amira, yes. for you, you come from a country where, mm -hmm. of course, several people have mm -hmm. given their assessment mm -hmm. of, 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 of the whole mm -hmm. issue of competitiveness. And, yes. and, and you come from, mm -hmm. uh, of course, a country where, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the number of candidates who are actually vying for this uh, particular seat uh, yes. for presidency mm. has been seen as what actually qualifies the mm. competitiveness mm -hmm. of, of the electoral process. Mm. What have been, or in your opinion as a young person, mm -hmm. been the dangers of having mm. such kind of a model mm -hmm. of politics? Of politics. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you have been uh, following as well uh, the news happening in Kenya in comparison with uh, Rwanda at the moment. In Kenya, uh, right now, that competitiveness, it's, it's tiring tension. It's bringing about uh, a lot of ethnicity. As much as we are preaching peace on the media and there are so many advertisements about it and it's so beautiful, like, oh, Rwanda will be, I mean, Kenya will be peaceful at this time. Uh, on the other hand, on the ground, yeah, the news that comes out is very different, yeah, and and we we've seen recently of, of uh, a leader from uh, the national board, uh, I don't know, election board in, in in Kenya having been you know found dead, and the Kenyans are making noise about so many things here and there, and I would rather not prefer that competitiveness where it's just about the leaders trying to um, bring out their self determination and their you know, their personal issues and their desires, and I want to be the leader, president of Kenya, like, no. I would prefer a situation as, as Rwanda, mm -hmm. where the manifestos raised are moving forward and elections are being done in a more calm, polite manner, given a period of, uh, let's say, one month. You see, like, for example, in Kenya, democracy, it's democratic, it's just like here. But then you'd, you'd, rather, you'd, you'd, you'd notice that when a leader is already elected, let's say you're elected uh, today, you're the president, you really start talking about how you want to be the next president in again the next in the election. next elections. So the, That's the cycle so competitive. is always The cycle is always on. go on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But when you look at here, it's, it's more about what are we going to do about in this certain period. And this is what has happened. This is a progress that we have seen. And there's actually progress. There is remarkable progress in Rwanda. So this, this democratic uh, climate of, 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 of rather uh, where people are you know, uh, calm, you are, you, the people are actually celebrating the success in the past 23 years and saying, yes, we can move forward and we can do it united we stand. So right. that is the kind of democracy. Okay. Lonzen, I mean, sorry, Gonzen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, mm. uh, same question, especially on the issue of competitiveness, because mm. this has come out in, in, in different quarters. You know, the EU says, we're not sending observers there. This is mm. a predetermined election. We don't want to ban our, our resources coming to an Which election. Which makes a lot of sense. I'm, I mean... Uh, <laughs> it does make sense to you? <laughs> yeah, not send observers. I mean, for, for, for what purpose? You mm -hmm. see, uh, why people are talking about the democratic process? Me, I'm looking at, at a political situation which is dominated very strongly by President Kagame. For good or for bad, but mostly for good because of his history, of what he has done. Mm -hmm. He's regarded as a hero by many Rwandans. Mm -hmm. But also for his strategic thinking, eh, making sure that like you'd expect of any leader to make sure that you, your views are so dominant on the political scene and ability to mobilize the RPF is very, very, very competent and uh, 
in urbanization and is very present across the country. So even if they were to take them so much, to, they would need very many years on the ground to uh, and be competitive. At the moment, it has not emerged. You, you can see the, the, the candidates who are on the ballot, the yes. other candidates on the ballot. Yes. Uh, they, they, they don't, they don't have the necessary machinery to compete with the RPF. Rather than uh, the idea of whether it's the mode of democracy and, uh, and so on, whether ethnicity can be there or not. I can tell you the politicians in this country given an opportunity, they will raise ethnicity. There are some guys in the exile, like the, 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 the priest, the, the guy, in, the former priest in France, uh, if you hear his speeches on, on the internet, if he was given a platform here, he would, he would bring out ethnicity. And in a dangerous form, I suppose the, the strict laws exist to make sure that such a, uh, a candidates are, are, are nowhere on a political scene. It's not that the, the people with that mission, without willing around. Frank, what about you? I mean, well, about the competitiveness of the whole process the and, 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 and the importance and the significance of the Rwandan model. I think to me, uh, the reason why you can't see that, you know, high level of uh, competitiveness, you know, comparing to some other democracies around, is because of uh, our, our, the nature of our, of our country, the, the unit, the perspective about unit. You know, I think to me it goes with the political vocabularies during the rallies and elections. You see, in our seeing on our, like looking at our side, when you check the vocabularies that uh, these candidates are using, Mr. Kagame and the other two, Philip and Frank, when you check their vocabularies, it's, you, you can't, there's no, there's no, there's no source of uh, that competitiveness and, you know, quarrels and, you know, political pushivos. Like, none of them says, I, you know, there's always, we, we, like they are, they are using us, one and do. So if there's no I, you can't see that competitiveness. But in some other democracies, you see, it's about a candidate and his party or her party. It's not about a nation mm. going forward. It's about I mm. and my party against them, him and his party. Mm. So it's not about... It's not about a nation. It's about a party and him or her. So with that political vocabulary, there will always be, you know, approvals and quarrels and fights and, uh, you know. But to our side, to our country, I love the, the vocabularies. You know, I've always heard the rallies, each and every one's rally. But when you check their vocabularies, yeah. It's very, you know, it's very, it's very, it's very, it's, it's very well constructed. There is no I, there is no we against them. So there is we, what we can do for the nation. Therefore, there comes the common ground. There comes common consensus. Right. And I think that's the, that's the, that, that's the thing behind this harmony. Right. In just a bit, I'll be standing up to actually take a look at uh, the manifestos of uh, the candidates on our super screen. And of course, we'll be able to look at uh, uh, some of those uh, promises that we've already uh, seen from uh, them, uh, of course, when it comes to the promises that I've made. I want to hear, especially from young people who President Pogami said himself said in one of his speeches uh, that need to actually be actively involved in politics. Now, the manifestos are here. The promises are there. And of course, I want to hear how these promises are touching on this group of the demographics, the youth of Rwanda. And of course, I know, uh, Amira, you, you may not be able to mm -hmm. uh, probably speak on your behalf because, mm -hmm. of course, you, you, you're not Rwandese, but of mm -hmm. course, being a Rwandese in association, in association. Of, association <laughs> of course, you'll be able to, mm -hmm. to tell from what you see mm -hmm. as far as the promises are concerned, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and the young people as far as these issues mm -hmm. of bringing them on board and taking care of their real issues, one of them being the jobs, mm -hmm. uh, which, 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 which has been an issue uh, at the end of the day. Talk to me about what you think mm -hmm. about that aspect okay. of the young people. Uh, we we all agree that uh, the future of Africa, you know, relies on the young people. 
we the other day we saw using youth connect so many you know Rwanda, uh, rwandans and east africans regional people coming all the way from their countries to come and convene in rwanda for a youth connect yeah moving forward but then uh, you know young people being involved in um in uh, development it's not just about being doctors and entrepreneurs there's a political aspect yeah mm -hmm. that they must be involved mm -hmm. and uh, if you look at the manifestos of uh, the candidates let's say in rwanda yeah? uh yes they have aspects of we'll provide more employment it's the usual yeah we'll provide more employment and every leader says that for the youth and we'll provide more health and and uh, all these things yeah but then the the, the challenge is they uh they are not laying out their strategies so clearly in, in a manner that, uh, I don't know how, how to put it, but it's not bringing in the mm -hmm. past yeah, seven mm -hmm. years. And, that, and that's, the, that's their problem, or rather say their weakness. Yeah? But um, they, so far, I would say, I've, I've read a bit of statistics in regards to Rwanda, and I've seen that uh, the employment rates as indicated by government uh, statistics yeah, mm -hmm. is that it has been it has mm -hmm. been reduced mm -hmm. i mean i mean increased yeah? yeah and now more young people are are employed yeah. the rates have gone from i think 40 something to 30 something yeah. uh, which 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 is a good which is a good thing yeah, yeah. for the country right now but uh, moving forward, of course, there's more that can be done. And uh, I, would, I would like to say that I like uh, the idea uh, of Rwanda trying to bring about more employment using ICT. Yeah? Using ICT. Using ICT. L let me just go to the screen right now. Yes. So we can actually start already <laughs> looking at uh -huh. the promises the that promises. have been made. Let's yes. start off with uh, mm -hmm. Felipe Maimana, this gentleman right here. Mm -hmm. He's the independent candidate. Of course, this is one of the areas that he's talking about, the democracy. Of course, resolving the question of refugees. He was here. He tried to actually explain a bit of uh, the issues that he's going to do to ensure that, uh, you know, the refugees don't necessarily come back, but also feel part mm. of rwanda you know he said that there is there could be two rwandas the rwanda in here and the rwanda outside talking of the rwandans who are outside that they feel like they're part of the process of you know decision Can making I say something on that yes I mean, when you look at the <laughs> rpf manifesto in 2010 yes they promised by now they have they would have resolved that question mm -hmm. and uh, of course with the the, uh, the cessation agreement with the U un you could say it has happened mm -hmm. but in practice it actually hasn't happened so mm -hmm. it's very interesting that my manner is raising it again mm -hmm. uh, at this stage. Mm -hmm. So there are conflicting views there. Was the question solved or it's not yet solved? Right. Is this something that will be interesting to voters? Mm -hmm. uh, let me hear from you, Lonzen. Do you think this is something that voters going to take their ballot in the diaspora on the third and those will be voting on the fourth? Is this something that they will be saying, that's a very interesting thing that will make me make a decision to actually decide who I'm voting for? To vote for my manner or for RPF? For my manner or for RPF? <laughs> because this is RPF also has that. Is this, is this an underlying issue that Rwandans who are going to vote will be looking at? Uh, the, um, well, as a, a, a vote f the, a decision making aspect, I don't think so, because um, at least not an aspect that differentiates candidates because if he's raised by my man he's really taking it out of the rpf like he said manifesto and and actually the rpf no, i said the manifesto um, in 2010 yeah. and they are promised by now they yeah. have no no I, I i know you address yes. you are you're addressing a technical aspect of mm. whether this no thing, i mean they, they put the timeline yeah yeah that's yes. fine whether they have or they have not I'm, I'm raising i'm pointing out that this is not only in the rpf manifesto as he said uh, then but even in the RPF's conduct and ethos, the, the, the interest of returning ref, uh, refugees is really at the heart of what RPF does. Yes, so to put it as a point mm -hmm. of winning votes is just self-defeating for self -defeating. me. Self-defeating. Well, I, I think, Friend. let's maybe say that uh, it was in the manifestos of RPF, mm -hmm. and then they have not free you know, worked on it. Mm -hmm. But again, that's not a winning point for the... For, for the other side, for, for the franc. Why is it not? <laughs> because if there is a percentage that RPF has taken the, the manifesto, the, has taken the point, you know, what is the fulfillment, and then the other one is just, you know, kicking off, starting. So to whom can you give a chance? A chance of starting it, or start work, starting working on it, and a chance of completing it, because it's, it's, it's been always, it's, it has been, it's a, it has been almost, uh, you know, 
put on the end. So mm -hmm. I think it's not a it's not a winning point. It's not a winning Actually, point. There's there's a larger argument that is um, can be said about just that's just one example. Mm -hmm. We can go at each and every um, issues raised by the opposition. Uh, you can go to Avineza's manifesto, you bring it up and so on. You can go to each and every point. Mm -hmm. And what it will tell you is that it will bring up what I just told you, is that the difficulty of uh, uh, assessing the challenges in RPF's delivery of mm -hmm. its previous manifesto mm -hmm. and to, 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 to gain an inroads into which you now can base a, a set of ambitions to sell to the, uh, to the Rwandan people. So there's a very serious um, weakness in assessing limitations of RPF and there are very many There are serious, there are areas where RPF has fallen short, and, but, but they require technicality to be able to uncover and now to create a program around which to sell to the people. Now, as a result of that, you, you, you find that the opposition are piggybacking on, on, on things on which they have not really done the necessary homework. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> what about your mirror? What do you think I mean, in terms of, you know, refugees, people who are outside of the country? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they could be working as mm -hmm. you are working in mm -hmm. Rwanda, uh, you know, uh, 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 and the aspects of saying... there are so many of them in yes, Kenya yes, still. There are yes. still a number of them in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the instances that I've met them, uh, usually some either have links going back or they are planning to go back. They've come for education and they go back. But I, I, would, I wouldn't be able to, I will, I'm not in the position to speak much, let's say, about uh, the refugee situation. But I feel like for the moment that I've been here and for the uh, period that I've stayed here and interacted with Rwandans, that uh, actually the RPF has done a lot in regards to the, to the refugee thing. And, 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 there's, and there, there are events and, uh, that happen internationally. Uh, I know of Rwanda day and you know events like that and uh, a lot of Rwandans coming in and out even at the at the memorial let's say for example I have been there and I went there with a Rwandan friend who was who was um, uh, from Kenya with me but then I had come back to to work and uh, to study here settled back and they took the initiative to talk to her and tell her that we have this thing where we meet often and we talk about situations and we're trying to encourage more so Rwandans to it's come not back much home. Of a big issue. It's not, it, 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 it's not much of a big issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not really. <laughs> right. Okay. So, mm. form a government that respects mm. democracy. Of course, this mm. is something that also, uh, you know, the Democrat Green Party presidential hopeful is also mm. talking about. He says we want to actually have real democracy mm. and, and, and real power sharing. Mm. Uh, before you come in, London, let me hear from you <laughs> on this that one. That goes back to the definition of what is democracy. <laughs> because, I mean, the government, when you look at the manifesto from uh, the creation of the RPF up to this day, they talk about democracy and promoting democracy. Mm -hmm. It's even a constitutional requirement. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody says they want to form a government that respects the democracy, are, we, are they assuming the government, pres the president <laughs> government, is not respecting democracy? Mm -hmm. It goes back to the definition of democracy mm -hmm. and how it's practiced. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why there's a big argument: the Kenyan mm -hmm. model, the Ghana, the Rwandan model, the Ghana model, the Burundi model, which is good for Africa, which is good for America, and so on. You know, you can't, it becomes an ideology. You can't copy paste an ideology. Right. You know? He talked of mm. piggy banking on what the RPF has either been able to do and do properly or not been able to fully It's more of a criticism than a piggy banking. I think uh, when you look at the manifestos broadly of the, the two opposition candidates, you think they actually look at what the RPF promises, then they, they either highlight what it is failing according to them or their own interpretation, but he said something very significant about the, the technical ability to analyze things, and mm -hmm. it's something that has lacked in this election. Mm -hmm. We don't mm -hmm. have like institutes, academies, or uh, policy think tanks that inform candidates, that mm -hmm. people who can actually look for the data and have the expertise, think and debate, and come out with policy issues so that the candidates go into <laughs> the field. <laughs> based on those issues, it is, is very lacking. So Lonsen people just doesn't seem to be either no, 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 buying no, no, what no, you're no. saying broadly, or he has broadly, broadly, what is it? Broadly, <laughs> broadly, I agree with him. Yes, and the reason I agree with him is. Because
<laughs> I'm adding something. Yes. <laughs> this is not the job of the think tanks to do the work for the parties the running for the presidency. Mm -hmm. They should have these arms within their parties. Mm -hmm. exactly they should have. Yes. I mean, even where the, mm -hmm. the, the think tanks are independent, yes. somebody can come to them and uh, maybe yeah, uh, commission them commission to do the work. Them yes. to do for yes, them, yes. Yeah. If we are not going to practice ethnic based politics mm -hmm. we have to be very good technically in programmatic aspects mm -hmm. of uh, electoral politics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we cannot remove one and then be very bad in the other mm -hmm. and when 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 uh, some journalist i think in france wrote about indifference in the elections but uh, they, they, <laughs> they they didn't capture that um if 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 the parameters for practicing political ethnic politics are closed, you have to be very effective technically in the pragmatic, programmatic designs mm. for, for, for you able to be able effective. And it means critical assessing the weaknesses uh, and to use them as entry points. If you don't that have that capacity, it's going to appear like the, the Rwandans, Rwandans are indifferent to the election. But that's inability to grasp what is the underlying uh, mm. issues mm. taking place. Right. Mm. If, if we flip and look at the 2010 promise uh, by the Rwanda Patriotic Front on the issue of good governance and justice, of course, they said that they want to give the people the power to check on the performance of the leaders they have elected. And in the promise for 2017, they're saying that they want to consolidate good governance and justice, consolidate values and unity of Rwandans, strengthen security institutions, strengthen foreign policy, which will also try to look trying to gauge and see the giving of the people the power to check on the performance of the leaders they have elected. Has this happened? Has this worked? That is do you, yes. Do you feel that today, as Frank, as an individual, you are able to come and say, you know what, the Minister of Education, for example, there's a big flop in your ministry, and of course there's need to actually either get you off from office and we have another person? Honestly, there is uh, accountability in our, in our systems. And I, I think uh, everyone can see that. And for me, what makes what 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 makes me happy is the is not the accountability already on the. It is the hunger and thirst and the zeal and passion to increase it. You know, I guess I guess when you look at the, I want to talk more of about uh, our PF and the Green Party. I, let's just see the personality of Mr. Kagame mm -hmm. as a person when you see how. He Try to embark on this issue of accountability. So it's the accountability level late has really gone high in comparison to another. But what makes it, you know, uh, special and unique mm -hmm. is the zeal, hunger, and uh, the spirit that nothing has been already done yes. yet. So you see, there is this mm -hmm. spirit of accountability in the systems, institutions, and leadership, governance. I think it's. Really it's really that he comes from the fourth estate uh, mm. an estate that was actually pointed fingers at as not being or playing that role of putting leaders or policy makers into accountability you know forms or, or actually influencing policies and delivery of policies uh, yeah the, the so the environment is there but the media is not actually taking advantage of that no it's Put about it's all about the responsiveness of the policy makers to the media because the media does there there are so many talk shows the people call in and invite the guest policy makers into studios uh, to talk about what they are doing we talked about education there have been many talk shows about the quality of education the close of some courses at some universities and so on but uh, policy makers that responsive if they are criticized by the public i don't think so they are more responsive and accountable to the president the citizens even uh, at the local government level they are always looking at meeting performance contracts they sign with the president more than if a citizen come yeah there are many ways there are some institutions which are actually very responsive they're put on hotlines uh, they have good customers care services or at least they are attempting but it has not reached at that level or even parliament it's, it's one of the arenas which is supposed to, to, to hold mm -hmm. uh, the government account what extent uh, the Public Accounts Committee does some work, but it, 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 there is very much room for improvement. Right. All right. So well, I think the media, the media think. Yeah, sure. For me, I think 
if if uh, if the counterbit uh, you know benchmarkings uh, is not on uh, on a spot the problem shouldn't be the institutions and uh, police makers and all that i think if there are if there is a, a certain weakness that weakness belongs to the media it belongs to the media uh, <laughs> of course <laughs> Because he's but, but that it, it also it, goes it, to what I was saying that if you may try to hold a, a government account on a particular policy, but we have an alternative policy. <laughs> the, the think tanks we <laughs> disagree with, you. but they have to be publicly out there and say these are possible policies we think are implemented are possible. So right. they communicate them. But what, what shows what shows then, accountability? Mm -hmm. I think what shows accountability shouldn't even be the media or what. Mm -hmm. It also goes back to the uh, mentalities of the citizens. For me, I think the best proof of, uh, of accountability is what accountability. When you look at the, the mentality of uh, Rwandan citizens, mm -hmm. the way they are approached towards the readers, mm -hmm. it's amazing. It shows, it, so, it shows how this accountability rate has gone higher when you compare this to some other countries. You see, the, 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 the average citizen understands that uh, he or she has to account his or her leader. And that shows the accountability. All right. Uh, we'll come back to Amira, but of course we're going to take a very short break okay. before you actually uh, say what you're just about to say. But of mm -hmm. course, uh, David uh, Sharangabo, who's actually uh, tweeting, says that we are sure as youth that uh, uh, President Kagame will deliver uh, youth empowerment promises like uh, he normally does. We'll actually delve a bit deeper into that issue because it's part of the uh, areas of uh, focus for the several, for the uh, various uh, political uh, candidates for these particular elections. We also have another one from uh, Jeff who says, a good thing is about to come this 2nd August. I think the voting is actually on 3rd, <laughs> not 2nd. But of course, when we come back, we'll dig a bit deeper into this particular manifesto as being our model or pilot. We'll be looking at what is promised here and what we already have by the different political leaders of the different parties who will be contesting in this election on the 3rd and 4th. 3rd for those in the diaspora and, of course, 4th, those living here in Rwanda. Use the hashtag Rwanda Election 2017. I'll be sampling your tweets in the course of the program. Do stay with us.
Right, thank you so much for still being with us. This is a special edition of analysis on the forthcoming August 3rd and 4th presidential election. Third for those living in the diaspora and of course on 4th for those living here in Rwanda. Are you ready to vote? Talk to us. Tell us what you already are preparing to do on these particular dates and of course if you're excited about it or if there are any particular questions that you have concerning this particular vote, either you have misplaced your voting card and you have a question to the National Electoral Commission, Feel free to send in your tweets via the hashtag Rwanda Election 2017. Or if you have any thoughts concerning the statements that are being made right on this particular program as well, just tweet me directly at Amjin and Nangwe, and I'll be able to sample those tweets right here in the course of the program. I have my panelists right here, Amira, and of course, Lonzen Rujira, and also Frank, and none other than Gonzag Mugano. Of course, we were just talking a bit about the manifestos and trying to look a bit into the different promises that uh, the different candidates have actually promised you. One of them that we've said we'll talk about was this issue of demography. And uh, this is by the independent candidate, Philippe Malmana, who says that he wants to control population growth to below 2%. And he also says he wants the women to actually give birth to not more than three. He, he was here on this show, he clarified and he said, two or three, this is what he actually said on this particular program. And he will find all the irresponsible men. This is something that, of course, touches directly the hearts of the population. Of course, we're talking about the issue of population growth, dealing with the population explosion, and this is what he promises to do if elected as president. Your quick thoughts on this. This is courageous of him because for someone looking for votes, we don't put there those unpopular, mm -hmm. obvious unpopular uh, suggestions. Mm -hmm. So it, it, is, it shows that he's principled on this particular issue. Mm -hmm. But I don't think... Uh, it's, it's very emotive, very emotive. You remember one time there was a policy of uh, medical contraception and it immediately exploded. People were saying that some groups are being targeted for castration or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in, an, in an African setting, telling somebody that you're supposed to have this number of children is mandatory, is very, very emotive. Well, the best way is to teach. And economics itself forces people to realize. Number one, if... People used to have a lot of children because they did not expect men to survive. So they would put there mm. so many so that mm. somebody can survive. But now, uh, life expectancy has now reached 67 years. So you see, this is a good policy if, if it but was to be But it should be taught not mandatory, not, not enforced. Mandatory. I'm trying to if, register if, it. If I was, uh, yes. if I was uh, his advisor, I would rather advise him to focus on... Um, taking care of single women, uh, rather maybe having a committee or something that will support women who uh, have children without uh, responsible men. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he I think, actually I think says that he's going to, uh, you know, find all the irresponsible men. That, that, that's man, different. That's, that's not, that's not supposed not to be. To he's, school, you don't uh -huh. buy food for them. Uh -huh. You're up for fines. This is what he says. I, 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 think, I think that is a diff different <laughs> aspect. That should not be his role. He should actually have maybe a commission that does that or maybe So there's nothing law. you like about but, this policy? Um, if it was to be implemented? No. Nah. Unless, unless he said something else about... Because um, you, you cannot control uh, how many children somebody gives birth to unless you tell them that if you give birth to two children or more than... Like, which, which country is that? You, you can be... Is supported financially. That's different. But you just tell somebody you don't give birth to more than two children. Mm -mm, that can't work. But if you say well, women and if you can prove that this man and is not responsible, that's a very different thing. Okay, so uh, it's yeah. a no-no for you it's for two no -no or three. For, yeah. London, before we go to Frank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think it is interesting that he said that is an, it is an issue of principle. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not principle because uh, my man himself has five children, so it's not principle. <laughs> <laughs> so. And also, if he's going to, to punish irresponsible men, he will start by himself. Why? Yeah. <laughs> now, but, 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 but seriously, on, on the issue of uh, the policy itself, I think you are better off fighting poverty. Because as people uh, graduate from poverty, mm -hmm. they tend to take certain decisions, among which is reducing the, the, the size or the family size. So I think it's much more uh, a, 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 a culture that uh, not only is, is um, 
uh, in Rwandan tradition, having many in, in children, like he said, mm -hmm. but sort of tied to the, the rural uh, lifestyles. But I think they can be addressed by shifts in socio-economic uh, uh, situations of people. Right. Yeah, Th more those, those things will address themselves. They will address themselves, yeah. so mm -hmm. this doesn't need a mandatory... Fight poverty, and I think the rest will take care we'll of itself. Take care of it. yeah. Frank, what, what is your I take? I think uh, when you look at the, you know, the first one, uh, the thing of uh, um, let me go to the two children or three that principle of you know having two or three children I think this is not a winning point I, I wonder if uh, the team that drafted all those points uh, they were outsourced from RPF because it's, uh, it's, it's like those experts who drafted the points were outsourced from the from the other party because uh, these points are taking the the candidate to the to the downfall because that's what he says is courageous of him because it's it's not a popular decision it's an for me it's not about popularity yes it's about repetition mm -hmm. <laughs> because that was in the manifesto of, of rpf uh, family planning you know, it's, it's been already there that's about family planning so it's, it's a problem of uh, repetition and vocabulary it's the same thing it's just a synonym I think this was not a point of winning, you know, RPF and Green Party. So uh, I think this is very, very skeptical. For me, it's, I see it as a, a point that is just taking him down stairs. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> a point of taking him down stairs. But listen, but when it comes to demographics, there, there are some African leaders who encourage their population to grow. Yes, yes. For, yes. for instance, Museveni boosts that he, he, during his time in office, the Yes, yes. But there are others like Emmanuel Macron was uh, ridiculing Africans that the women produce very many children yes. that we have a civilization problem. So <laughs> at times, perspective to how people look at how economies are supposed to grow, uh, superpower dynamics and so on. Uh, so Good. Let's now shift gears and talk a bit about the manifesto of your namesake, Frank, Dr. Frank Avineza. He says a very... Most people have been saying that is is, is a bit populist. It's Can you go back and don't mention names? Can you <laughs> mention names again? Come on, he's called Frank. Frank. There's nothing wrong Say with that. you sharing names <laughs> with another person. Kidding. Or someone who you I was kidding. Agree with. But this is this was the point here. He says he wants to reduce the VAT value added addition uh, tax, mm. and you know this is one thing that if, if, if any candidate was to go out there and, and actually speak about. He would either touch the good sides of, of, of the electorate, or probably that some will say this is a skeptical thing. It's actually a populist decision. The RPF spokesperson was seated here on this show last Sunday, and he actually said, as RPF, they are not promising to cut any taxes because it's an, an, an unrealistic promise if a country needs to actually fulfill all its requirements of delivering the good hospitals which the popula population actually needs. But if you look at how the reaction has been from the small businesses, which having as a promise is to actually give them tax breaks of two years before they actually start taxing them. Mm. From an entrepreneur's point of view or as a young person, is mm. this something that a young person would say, you know what, mm. he's actually speaking to my heart. He's actually speaking to my needs. I've been struggling mm. to build my business and because of this VAT, mm. if he actually wins, <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> He would speak to my heart, but how would the country run? Like, um, you can't reduce taxes for a country that is trying to build sustainable development moving forward. And uh, if you cut down it, two, year, two years is a very long time. And I don't know by how, how what percentage he said he's going to reduce this, but I also believe that it's quite quite unrealistic but, yeah uh, if but someone it, is telling you you won't pay that, taxes that's the for thing. two years i would say yes 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 please that's nice but uh. then look at it in the long term mm. and you're like in two years mm. how will my country be at that time yeah will everything be able to, will i be able to able to export my products let's say for example will they be marketable in other places will i have enough finances will i bring in uh, more mm. investors to try and you know make move this economy forward so that's the thing the point is fine you speak to my heart and say yes you will but then will you be able to sustain this moving forward after two years and then now maybe after the two years are back and now my 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 business has is booming yeah that's when you decide to cut tax four or five times more which is still not realistic isn't that the whole game of politics mm. <laughs> trying to make you feel 
good and meets your expectations in terms of your thoughts? If you notice that um, uh, re since maybe yesterday or the, today, the, the RPF uh, is saying that, you know, at the RPF we don't lie, we never lie to you, we tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. There's a reason. Because they think that Havineza is lying to the people. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is the populism, you know, that Havineza is trying to use. It's, it's interesting that uh, on uh, almost every initiative that uh, Havineza is proposing, he's using a Swedish benchmark. Yet Sweden is possibly the highest, uh, <laughs> the country with the highest tax rate uh, in the world, possibly. If, for sure, probably one in the top five. Now, um, but for some reason, when it comes to the taxes, he evades Sweden, <laughs> and, but uses everything else, he uses Sweden as an example. But uh, the issue is, what do you do with the taxes? And I think that um, uh, people don't necessarily, of course they would prefer lower taxes, but uh, as long as the revenue being produced goes in the public goods, I think people are fine with that. The problem there would come when there is erosion of public trust about what is being done with the revenues co collected. But until that is... Uh, uh, More businesses mm. which are coming up. Okay, most businesses actually, the small ones, are not VAT registered. You need to have a certain turnover to be VAT registered. So no, but now it's been cut. Mm -hmm. VAT for small and medium, it's totally. But to me, yeah. to me, so, so, where, so, mm. so where it comes back to the issues I was talking about earlier. You can make a proposal, but are there experts to calculate and say if we reduce VAT to fifteen percent, how much of government revenue is going to diminish? Mm. How how much impact will it have on businesses that they grow faster? Mm. Then the, the the tax base increases. Mm -hmm. uh, then you recover, you recoup that. You, you know, it, it happens. Um, Trump is Let's saying the honest. same thing that he yeah. wants to cut taxes yeah. for that business. Let's be honest, very quickly. Uh -huh. Let's be honest. You know, well, we we, we are not su supporting any party. We, we are not politicians. You know, at the end of the day, what matters is uh, what's the point? What's the point? The yeah, point is uh, <laughs> the point is uh, is uh, raising this point of taxes. It it wasn't really a wise idea. It wasn't really a wise point because. The taxes have been well utilized in Rwanda to the extent bringing it as an issue, citizens will not understand it politically. Like, like intellectually, this wasn't a really a critical wise point. That, because that Rwanda, has, Rwanda has shown that uh, taxes have been really been well utilized and, and, and it has been real, well put on the table and shown to every citizen that uh, tax matters. So, so people feel like whether it's high or not, as long they as it's being They don't care because they have seen the, 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 the people actually do, do care. Mm -hmm. the, the conversation is not about how the taxes are used. They the say you should is, care. Yes. The, the, the conversation is on the impact on the, the person because mm -hmm. I've said, I, I listened to him, I went to Russia and listened to his campaign, I said this guy is being populist. Mm -hmm. But the, the people there, he knows it has an impact on the ground. Now, the solutions are different if they are workable or not. The fact that, like, like the land tax, the land tax is very new. Mm -hmm. Most people usually uh, in a subsistence economy yes. don't pay any direct tax. Yes. Eh? So the land tax is, has had an impact first. Even yes. though it may not be much on some people, but they are mere fact that they are experiencing <laughs> paying a direct tax uh, for the first time. Yes. Okay, those days there used to be hard tax and uh, graduated tax, but these days on a subsistence economy you may not experience a, a direct tax. Or the small, other smaller taxes, which are actually... Like if you take your chicken to the market or a banana, <laughs> or whether you should, we, we usually have market fees, not necessarily right. a big tax. It, it has an impact. Even the, the business, at the business level, there are many businesses which are failing. I mean, in the media, we have a serious problem. With, uh, many of our media houses are not meeting their tax obligations. So would uh, this make so it, it easy for them to vote for him? Or do you feel that people will say, oh yeah, this is just actually <laughs> being populist, it won't work? No, the, the expectation is, would it, would it make the government review some of the tax policies? Okay. That if was was him, have an you have spoken, I want to hear from <laughs> Amira as mm -hmm. we go, because mm -hmm. we also don't have much time. Just quickly, mm -hmm. like in 40 seconds, mm -hmm. your take home points mm -hmm. or your message mm -hmm. to Rwandans as to they Rwandans. go to participate in this election. And also for Kenyans, mm -hmm. our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a very big question to say mm. in 40 minutes. Mm. But I'll start by saying unity and peace, mm. yeah? Uh, there's, a, there's a saying that's saying, Pamoja, 
to ngane that oh sorry let me 40 seconds so i would say that as you make a decision towards the leaders to vote for yeah think about not just now but 5 10 15 years to come because repercussions never just I've never seen now but the years to follow and um and, and 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 moving forward in whatever role that you are in right now whatever take and whatever um career whatever capacity that you have in right now make an impact in moving your country forward right. and yeah making the right decision thank you yes. lonzen as you give us your take home point do you think this is an easy ride for the rpf mm -hmm. as uh, they enjoy you know they say we probably enjoy the goodwill so it's going to be a smooth sail for president paul kagame in this vote or do you think people will be scrutinizing and saying as we had last Sunday, and people will be like, okay, we didn't deliver on this one, so we're going to no, make it no, rough no. for you. It is actually, unfortunately, too easy for the RPF. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, they're not, the opposition is not bringing out the best in, in, in Kagame. Mm -hmm. He can do much better in terms of uh, the, 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 the campaign. But he doesn't need to. This is like uh, the RPF is like uh, in in, fo in fo football mm -hmm. when you've scored like nine goals and you at home yes. and you're going to the away match. Yeah. You just pl play defense and be in your area zone area. Don't do anything much. Mm -hmm. So the RPF. That's why it. In fact, the RPF was very correct in in coining uh, the, this term that you know the, this is a celebration. It is a marriage in Ubukwe. Nagaramatora mm -hmm. Ubukwe. Yeah, yeah, because the thing is, has been. Um, the, 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 the opposition has not done the necessary homework to put the, the uh, to bring out the best in, in President Kagame and as a result Nyine na Nobukwe Nobukwe, Frank, <laughs> closing very briefly, we have to go for the news I think uh, to me this election should teach the, the parties, the other parties to, to really prepare for the next you know, elections mm -hmm. after, you know, after seven years because they have not really given her time, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. I don't mean uh, competing and bringing all these political quibbles and all quarrels. No, I mean competence. They have not really shown competence. They have not worked on their homework. Mm -hmm. They have not really prepared themselves to. So they need to actually they do re, that. They, re, the to, they, they need to give the, the other candidate hard time next time. Right. You see, all the three candidates have not brought out something new. And dramatic. All the three. All the three. Mm -hmm. they, they are all talking about present uh, policies, but the opposition is talking about where they have not been done well. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, Havineza calls himself, oh, his supporters call him uh, Chimaranzara. So mm -hmm. they are assuming there is hunger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yesterday, the way that people are saying we hear hunger on radio in Somalia, we, we have never seen it. But others, he, he says Chimaranzara. So it has, it's a, like a criticism mm -hmm. on some of the agricultural policies. Not right. like changing them, but they are not going to do it. So the question is, what extent will the RPF be responsive to this criticism and adjust their policies accordingly? Good. That would be the big... Thank question. you so much. We have to go. Asante Sana, of course, we want to say a big thank you for actually watching this first edition of the analysis of uh, the presidential election that will be taking place on 3rd and the 4th of August 2017. We'll be back on uh, Thursday and, of course, we'll also be here on election night to try also give you the results. Plus, of course, with our team of analysts who will be also here with us to just try and help us digest uh, the happenings during that particular moment. We want to say thank you for tweeting. Let's keep talking. Of course, this is a big one. Make sure you exercise your voting right. And if you have any questions, keep them coming. Of course, we have people who are in charge of giving you the feedback and the response to those areas of concerns that you have. Let's keep talking. We'll be seeing you again next time, same place. My name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye for now. Nanjango Mbeleke, Itimenezo, Chizaranga, Mukandida, Marimana, and you a ni Amadanaje, a Mugifaransa, a Taiskari, which are the steps in which is Swahili in Gazi, and Vivuga, a Kunifuza, a co, the Tedim Bele, to the Chi, Duru Heju. No, no, Zimimujingo, Zinjenzi, Zimigambia, Harimo. Kudasubira inyuma kudahora mu byakera no guha ubushobozi abaturage